hello students so in this video we're going to start with a new chapter that is real numbers okay a very very important chapter so real numbers basically what are real numbers okay now so far you have learned different types of numbers isn't it so let's recall those things you have learned something called as natural numbers isn't it natural numbers which is denoted by capital letter n isn't it which is denoted by capital letter n what are these natural numbers the numbers which start from 1 this is the definition that usually you guys say isn't it but it is not correct it is 50% correct not completely correct because when you say the numbers which start from 1 and if i ask you 3.5 does it belong to natural numbers you may think okay the numbers which start from 1 3.5 comes after 1 then it should belong to natural numbers so this is the mistake that you guys do okay 3.5 is not a natural number so what are natural numbers then how to define it properly those numbers which are used for counting that is the important word okay numbers used for counting purpose okay those type of numbers are called as natural numbers okay how do you count say suppose i give you some chocolates and ask you to count how many are there how do you start you start with 1 2 3 4 and so on isn't it that is why we say the numbers which start from 1 but the correct way is the numbers which are used for counting purpose okay so in this end we have got 1 2 3 and it keeps going okay those are natural numbers okay to this natural numbers if i just include one more number that is zero then it is known as a two, new type of number known as whole number 0 1 2 3 so on okay without zero it is natural with zero it is whole number okay let me write that also whole number okay then we have got something called as integers what are this integers this is a group okay integer is a group what do we have in this group we have zero in this group and all the positive numbers 1 2 3 so on and the negative numbers minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 to be precise the correct way is zero positive natural numbers and negative natural numbers this is the exact definition okay positive natural numbers negative natural numbers and zero negative of natural numbers that's what i mean by negative natural number these are natural numbers if i put minus it becomes negative of natural number okay so how do you denote integers it is denoted by capital letter z okay now in all these things we know what belongs in that group say suppose if i take natural numbers what is there in this group 1 2 3 what should not be there in this group or what doesn't belong to this group zero doesn't belong to this group do we have any negative numbers no do we have any fractions or decimals no so in natural numbers we won't have zero we won't have negative numbers we won't have decimals or fractions coming to whole numbers do we have zero yes we have zero here but what we don't have fractions or decimals and we don't have negative numbers coming to integers we have negative positive zero everything is there then what is not there decimals are not there or fractions suppose if i give you minus 3 by 5 it is a negative number Min minus 3 by 5 is not an integer okay it is called something else okay minus 4.5 it is a negative number but it doesn't come in integers group integers group have got only a natural numbers and negative of natural numbers which means they don't have fractions or decimals okay the next type of numbers is known as rational number okay what is this rational number those numbers which can be written in the form of p by q whenever you are able to write a number in this form where p and q are integers and q should not be equal to 0 q 
should not be equal to zero. Okay. Why Q should not be equal to zero? Let's let's understand with some examples. Okay, let's take some positive rational numbers. These positive rational numbers are actually called as fractions. What is the difference between fraction and a rational number? Both are almost same. Okay, fractions are only positive, but rational numbers can be positive and negative. Okay, so let's take some rational numbers like this. In fact, these are also called as fractions: three by five, two by seven. Okay, zero by three, three by zero. Okay, let's take this. This is not a rational number, isn't it? Because the denominator should not be zero. Let's understand why it should not be zero. Okay, now one by four. This is the fraction, right? Basically, fraction is used to represent a part of something. There is something big. One full apple, you write it as one. But if I take a small piece out of it, how do I represent it math mathematically? You represent it using fractions. Okay, say suppose you take half apple. Half apple. How do you represent it in maths? We write it as one by two. One by two is read as half, isn't it? So these fractions are used to represent a small part of something big. Okay. Now let's take this fraction one by four. Basically, this denominator tells you the complete thing, the apple or chocolate, whatever it is, the whole thing is divided into how many equal parts. The denominator tells you how many equal parts the whole thing is divided into, and the numerator tells how much we have taken. Okay, for example, let's take a cake like this. Okay, now the denominator is telling you the cake is divided into four pieces. Okay, so one by four. I am taking only one piece out of it. Is it correct? One by four. This is one by four. Okay, three by five. Let's say there is a cake again. Let's divide into five equal parts: one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Imagine these five parts are equal. Okay. Now I am taking three parts out of it. This is one part, two, three. Possible? There are there is a cake. I am divided into seven pieces. For five pieces, out of this five pieces, I'm taking how much three. The denominator tells you how many pieces you have divided the apple or cake or whatever. The numerator tells how much you have taken. Two by seven. Again, the cake is divided into how many pieces? Seven pieces. I'm taking two pieces. Okay. Now coming to this zero by three. Okay. Let's understand this zero by three. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. If numerator is zero, it is possible. Why the apple or the cake is divided into three pieces? How many pieces I am taking? Zero piece. It makes sense. Okay, there are three pieces, but I am not taking anything. Okay. Now, what about this three by zero? There is a cake which is divided into how many pieces? Zero pieces. The cake is divided into zero pieces, but I am taking how many piece out of it? Three piece. Does it make sense? The cake or the apple is divided into zero piece. We have not at all divided it. But how many pieces I am taking? I am taking three pieces out of it. Does it make sense? No. That is why you should not have zero in the denominator. If you have zero in the denominator, we say it is not defined. You cannot define this. Okay. That is why in rational numbers or in anything, the denominator cannot be zero. Okay. Now we have learned this: natural whole numbers, integers, rational. The other type of number is known as irrational number. What is this irrational numbers? The opposite of rational. Rational are denoted by Q. Irrationals are denoted by Q dash. Okay. So what are irrational? The numbers which you cannot write it in this form. If you can write in this form, then it is rational. If you cannot write it in this form, then it is known as irrational. Okay. So let's let's understand that. Okay. The numbers which cannot be written in the form of P by Q, okay. That is Q dash irrational numbers. Okay, irrational numbers, which cannot be written in the form of P by Q, is known as irrational. In another words, non-terminating and non-recurring. If there is, for example, non-terminating means up the decimal doesn't stop; it keeps going. Non-recurring is there is no repetition, there is no pattern. For example. 
if you observe this 4.575757 goes on this doesn't stop it keeps going so it is non terminating but it is recurring there is a pattern that you can observe 5757575757 this is recurring suppose if i take like this 1.1089 2875603215 something here you can see there is no pattern there is no pattern repeated there is no pattern repeated therefore we call this as non recurring at the same time it is not stopping so it is non terminating such kind of things these kind of things you cannot express in terms of p by q you cannot write this in terms of p by q therefore these are called as irrational numbers okay there is also one more thing if you are not able to find a square root or cube root of any numbers then those square root of that number and cube root of that number are irrational to be simple to make it simple root 2 can i find square root of 2 can we find what do you mean by square root of 2 a number which multiplied by itself should give you 2 please do not tell it as 2 ones are 2 ones are is not correct 2 is a different number 1 is a different number you take any number multiplied by itself that is why we write square root of 25 as 5 because 5 multiplied by itself 5 5 is a 25 square root of 16 is 4 because 4 4 is a 16 square root of 9 is 3 because 3 into 3 is 9 any number multiplied by itself should give you the answer but square root of 2 there is no number as such which multiplied by itself will give you root 2 no there is no number as such therefore these kind of things root 2 Can you find square root of three? Cube root of four? Cube root square root of four is possible, but cube root of four is not possible. What do you mean by cube root? A number multiplied by itself three times. Suppose if I ask you what is cube root of eight, you give me as two. Why? Because two into two into two three times. If you multiply, you get eight. Cube root of twenty-seven is three because three multiplied by itself three times. Three into three into three, you get twenty-seven. Isn't it? so if you are not able to find square root of a number cube root of a number all those things come under irrational numbers okay two different these are the things that you have learned okay now coming to real numbers all these numbers together is known as real numbers he is the boss he is the ceo of the company okay under these under this person we have got so many things okay to make it simple real numbers can be divided into two categories okay real numbers can be divided into two categories let me tell you that what are those two categories okay once again let me erase this completely okay real numbers is divided into two categories one is rational and irrational which we are going to see in this chapter we are going to solve certain problems on irrational and certain problems on rational okay now real numbers is basically two different categories if i i can represent it like this let's take a big circle okay this circle is representing real numbers okay in this circle there are two persons one is rational another one is irrational i'll write it inside itself irrational okay inside this rational we have got integers i'll write z here okay i'll write z here integers okay okay It meaning okay he is like he is the big boss who has got two persons under him rational and irrational okay rash irrational doesn't have any person inside him okay no one is working below him this rational has got integers next level the next lowest level is whole numbers okay and the next lowest number is natural numbers okay remember this so rational 
below rational we have got three more persons integers below integers we have got whole numbers below whole numbers we have got natural numbers this is the better way of remembering okay i can also tell you this observe the whole the natural number is inside the whole number isn't it the natural number is inside the whole number which means every natural number is a whole number every natural number is a whole number but the other way is not true every whole number is not a natural number okay because zero is a whole number but it doesn't come in natural number this you can uh, remember it very easily okay let me write that separately here okay first comes q inside q you will have z inside z you will have w inside w you will have n okay so every natural number is a whole number similarly every whole number is a integer possible but the other way because this complete whole number is, is inside integers w is inside z w is inside z which means every whole number is integers but the other way integer is not inside whole number therefore i cannot say every integer is a whole number for example minus 2 it is a integer but it is not a whole number similarly every integer is a rational number you take any integer it will be a rational but the reverse is not true okay you can remember such things basically real numbers as soon as we speak about real numbers two things should come into your mind it has got two persons in them one is real i mean one is rational another one is irrational rational you can express in the form of p by q irrational you cannot express in the form of p by q okay this is the basic thing these are the things that we are going to discuss okay what are the other main things that we are going to discuss in this chapter it is something called as hcf and lcm highest common factor and lowest common multiple or least common multiple okay let's understand what is what are these what are, what does they exactly mean okay so let's start with highest common factor okay let's go word by word okay highest common factor hcf okay highest common factors let's start with this word factor okay what do we mean by factor we are, we have also seen in our previous academic years like factorization what is the exactly is this factorization and factors all those stuff very simple factor of a number if i say factor of 6 or factor of 4 it is simply the ways the number of ways that i can express 4 okay for example if i ask you factors of 4 or or to be very simple to be very simple this this definition will be easy which two numbers should you multiply so that you get 4 the numbers that you have to multiply in order to get 4 the factors of 4 i can write it as 1 4s are 4 or 4 1s are 4 multiplication is commutative you multiply 1 4s are 4 1s are both will be same okay so here which are the numbers that i multiplied to get 4 1 and 4 so factors of 4 are 1 Four. Is there anything else? Yes. Two into two is also four. So the other factor is two. So factors of four are one, four, two. Let's take factors of six. Factors of six. If I want to get six, which are the numbers that I have to multiply? One into six or six into one. Then two into three or three into two. Both are one and the same. The factors are which are the numbers that I've used here. i have taken 1 6 2 3 so the factors of 6 are 1 2 3 6 3 is other factors in another word i can also tell you that factors of 6 are nothing but those numbers which will exactly divide 6 which are those numbers that divide 6 1 divide 6 1 will divide all the numbers 1 divide 6 6 divides itself 2 divide 6 3 divide 6 so if i ask you what are the factors of 8 you can think it in two ways what is the first way which are those numbers if you multiply you get 
वन एट जा एट ओके वन एंड एट आर फैक्टर्स टू फोर जा एट तो टू एंड फोर आर फैक्टर्स एनीथिंग एल्स थ्री फोर जा ट्वेल्व बट थ्री फोर जा ट्वेल्व राइट सो इट्स नॉट अ फैक्टर I need eight. If you multiply, you should get eight. That is one way. Or the other simplest way is those numbers which divide eight exactly, exactly in the sense you should get remainder as zero. Okay. Is this number divisible by one? Yes. Is this number divisible by two? Yes. By three? No. You can't divide eight by three. If you divide, you won't get remainder zero. By four? Yes. Again by eight. Okay. So these numbers are known as Factors. I mean, factors of eight are one, two, four, eight. I hope it is clear. Factors are simply those numbers which divide the given number. Okay. Now, let's come to this word, common factor. Let's let's take here itself. Let's discuss about this eight and this four. What are the factors of eight? One, two, four, eight. What are the what are the factors of four? One, four, two. What are the common things in them? One, one is common. Then four is common. Therefore, the common factors are one and four. If I discuss between eight and six, what are the common factors? One and two. See, you have got one and two, one and two. So common is simply the numbers that are same in both. Okay. Now let's come to this highest common factor. So which are the common factors of eight and four? It is one and four, isn't it? Just observe the factors of eight are one, two, four, eight, one, four, two. Which are the things common? One and four. One and four. These are the common things. Which is highest in them? Four. Okay. So the HCF is four. HCF for four and eight is four. In another word, I can also say it like this. If the question is HCF of four and eight, we write it as four. Meaning, which is the highest number that divides these two numbers? It is four, as simple as that. Okay, you need not do all the stuff. You can directly do it. If I ask you, what is the HCF of six and four? It, the meaning is, okay. Well, let's do the actual way. What is the actual way? Find the factors of six. The factors of six are one, two, three, six. Find the factors of four. The factors of four are one, two, four. Which are the things that are common? One and two. Among that, which is the highest? Two is the highest. So H C of six comma four is two. This is the process, but you can also do it very easily. You got six comma four, which is the highest number, a big number that divides both. It should divide six. It should divide four. One. Is there any other number other than one? Yes, it is two. Two divides both. You can divide four by two. You can divide six by two. Can I say three? No, three divides six, but it doesn't divide four. Okay, so the highest common factor of six and four is two. Okay, HCF of HCF of ten comma fifteen, which is the highest number that divides both. Which is the highest number that divides both? It is five. Five twos are ten. Five threes are fifteen. You can divide it. So HCF of these two is five. Okay, HCF is basically the answer which divides both the numbers, highest number that divides both. Okay, now let's come into LCM. What is meant by LCM? Okay, LCM is least common multiple. LCM is least least common. Multiple, okay. Suppose let's start with this word multiple. If I ask you multiples of four or multiples of six or multiples of five, it is simply the tables of four, four tables, five tables, six tables. Okay. Uh, start telling me the four tables. Four ones are four, four twos are eight. So the multiples of four are four ones are four, four twos are eight, four threes are twelve. Sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, goes on. Similarly, if I ask you multiples of six, six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six, goes on. What about five? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. When I say multiples, it is simply the tables. That's it. Okay. You can also take the negative numbers. Four into minus one, minus four, minus eight. 
the negative of this plus 4 take negative minus 4 minus 8 these are also multiples but in this chapter we are discussing only the positive multiples okay not the negative okay we have restricted ourselves to positives okay 4 8 12 so on these are known as multiples common multiple means what for example common multiple of 4 and 6 those numbers which are same in both 12 comes in both 24 comes in both then 36 comes in both you can keep going these are the common multiples the word is least common multiple which is the least among them these are the common things which is the least the first one this is the first one right that will be your least common multiple okay it is simple when i say least common multiple lcm it is simply you take four tables six tables which is the number that comes in both which is the first number that comes in both the tables it is 12. if i ask you what is the lcm of 3 and 5 you do a method right 3 comma 5 3 ones are then 5 as it is that is a method okay now what is the meaning of lcm least common multiple very simple you take three tables five tables which is the first number that comes in both 3 ones are 3 3 twos are 6 9 12 15 so on similarly 5 ones are 5 5 twos are 10 5 threes are 15 as soon as you see 15 is the first number which comes in both the tables first right therefore lcm of 3 and 5 is 15 lcm of 4 and 6 uh, just now we finished it right we'll take lcm of 6 and 5 lcm of 6 and 5 you just write the six tables one side and you write the five tables one side which is the first number that comes in both that will be your lcm as simple as it but you've got many many methods to discuss okay so this is the meaning of lcm least common multiple in another word i can also say like this lcm of 4 comma 6 is 12 isn't it in another word i can also say it like this which is the smallest number which is the smallest number that is divisible by both 12 right 12 is divisible by 4 it is also divisible by 6 meaning 4 can divide 12 6 can divide 12 this is the smallest number we have got more numbers bigger numbers also after 12 i can tell 24 24 is divisible by this divisible by this okay as simple as that okay so hcf and lcm these are the meaning i as common factor least common multiple okay now in this chapter we are going to learn how to find hcf of lcf and lcm of very very big numbers what i have given here are very small numbers okay uh, suppose here i have given you the lcm of 4 and 6 which is 12 easy instead of that if i ask you lcm of 1089 and 2892 can i write the tables of this 1089 1089 ones are 1089 1089 twos are 2198 or 188 or something can i keep doing that like that and the same thing write the tables of this write the tables of this and find which is the first number that comes in both it is not possible right okay if, if what if i put one more number here these are very very big numbers right we are not able to find the lcm very easily so then we should have some kind of tricks to do it that is what we are going to learn okay the very first concept is we are going to learn how to find hcf and lcm of very very big numbers okay so the first concept is to find hcf okay using something called as euclid's division lemma okay the first concept euclid's division lemma i can simply write it as edl okay euclid's division lemma let's simply take it as edl okay what is the lemma basically it is a statement which is proved it is already a proved statement which is used to prove something else okay as simple as that now what does this euclid's division lemma tell you you take any two integers positive integers we can also take negative but we are restricted ourselves to only positive okay take any two positive numbers positive integers okay in general let's say a and b in general let's say a and b okay these two integers you take any two positive any positive integers okay there exists two more integers this is the symbol used for there exists okay 
there exist two more integers q and r q and r in such a way that this a will be equal to b into q plus r if you choose this a value and b value you will get q value and r value which is fixed for these two selection this is fixed okay i will give you example okay where this relation is satisfied we also call this as division algorithm okay actually that is a uh, different thing okay but uh, as the process is as most similar okay this euclid's division lemma and division algorithm which we are going to look into the next part they are almost similar okay so people also call this as division algorithm itself okay so in simple words how to remember this very simple just remember it like this the dividend dividend is equal to divisor into quotient easy way of remembering this plus reminder what is euclid's division lemma dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder or a is equal to bq plus r let me take two values a and b let's say a is 7 b is some 15 okay i can get this relation i can get a such a thing observe okay i can write uh, let me take the other way okay a is considered to be i mean b is less than a okay it can also be equal but less than a let's take it like that okay a is 15 b is 7 i should have told there itself a you are selecting two values a and b a should be greater than b okay that is how we have selected okay we have selected like this a and b now i can get this relation i can write 15 as observe 7 into 2 plus 1 isn't it observe this is your a value this is your b value similarly if i take a as some 10 and b as some 3 then this 10 can be written as 3 into 3 plus 1 if i take a as some 17 and uh, b as some some let's say 3 then 17 can be written as 3 into 5 plus 2 isn't it we are getting a relation this thing is known as euclid's division lemma okay now if you observe we use the word unique for any two integers a and b there exists unique integers q and r what do i mean by that See here if these two values are fixed 17 and 3 your a and b is fixed this is my a and b so i can write a as 3 into 5 plus 2 5 and 2 these are the only things that you will get for 17 and 3 if these two are fixed there is no other way that you can write 17 as 3 into something plus something there is no other way it should be only 5 and 2 other than 5 and 2 you cannot have anything else that is why you use the word unique other than this you cannot have nothing okay there is no possible that you can satisfy this relationship okay if i for example let's take this a value is 15 b value is 7 can i write 15 as 7 into something plus something other than this see i can write 15 as 7 into 2 plus 1 agreed 15 can be written as 7 into 2 plus 1 agreed is there any other way that 15 can be written as 7 into something plus something is there any other way any other numbers that satisfy let's take 3 and 1 7 threes are 21 plus 1 is 22 not possible there is no possibility at all that is why we use the word unique okay let's take this itself 10 and 3 10 can be written as only like this 3 into 3 plus 1 if your a value is 10 and b value is 3 then you can write it like this is there any other way think 3 into something plus something other than this 3 and 1 can you put something else here and make it equal no not possible okay remember i'm talking about integers q and r don't put fractions here okay for example uh, people might do like this sir i'll put 1 by 3 here and i'll put 9 here so 3 3 gets cancel 1 plus 9 is 10 10 equals 10 sir we are getting another number you said only 3 and 1 we have got another number but what was my thing q and r were what integers they are integers okay they are not fractions so you cannot take like this okay so this is euclid's division 
lemma in simple words suppose if you divide 15 and 7 how much you get 7 twos are 14 one carry therefore this divisor i mean dividend 15 can be written as divisor that is 7 into quotient plus reminder that's how we got it okay let's take another number let's say you are dividing 19 by 3 okay now how do i write divide it 3 6 are 18 1 is the reminder so how do you write 19 as dividend is equal to divisor into quotient 3 into 6 plus reminder okay so how, the thing that you have to remember in euclid's division lemma is this stuff dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder okay and one more stuff is this uh, r value okay will always be less than this okay will always be less than b okay whatever your b is it will always be less than that it cannot be greater or equal also okay you cannot have equal or greater than this okay so we will we'll discuss more about this when we start doing the problems okay this is just the introduction of real numbers what are real numbers what you have got two things in real numbers rational and irrational then what is factor highest common factor what is multiple least common multiple and i've also given you euclid's division lemma okay in the next video we will start solving the problems that is how to find hcf using this euclid's division lemma what we learn now is dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus reminder this is known as euclid's division lemma this is used this is used to find the hcf of two given numbers very very big numbers you can find it once we finish that hcf then we, let's learn how to find the lcm of big numbers okay thank you students